we are finally going to raise taxes on the rich and large corporations who are not paying their fair share of taxes. Let's talk about your stimulus checks that will be sent out by President Biden. So the CARES Act passed in March 2020 raised the weekly jobless benefits by around $600 a week. It offered aid to workers, typically ineligible for traditional state benefits, like the self-employed, gig workers, and part-time people. Now Congress twice extended the programs. That for decades, working families have been struggling, the very rich have been getting richer, and you got billionaires and large corporations that pay in a given year nothing in taxes. Last December and again this March, but opted not to do so a third time. That means about 9 million people are poised to lose those benefits by Labor Day. Another 3 million or so will see their benefits reduced. Families are scared of what comes next, everybody. It was a team effort for us to win the vote. I want to salute Steny Hoyer, our distinguished majority leader, Mr. Clyburn, our distinguished whip, Catherine Clark, assistant speaker, and all of the members of the leadership who worked so hard uh, on this. According to CNBC, some economists believe that the program should end now, arguing that enhanced federal benefits offer an incentive for people to stay home rather than look for work. And White House officials also recently signaled that federal benefits should cease as planned in most states. So yes folks, the unemployment benefits are coming to an end, but do you agree with that? Should the unemployment benefits be extended? Tell me in the comments below. There was a record 10 million job openings in June. So that everyone has the full advantage of what building the infrastructure does. It creates jobs in the building, it creates commerce in and that exceeds the number of officially unemployed individuals. That dynamic has led some economists to question why those who are out of work are not rushing to take in available jobs. About half of the United States, primarily led by Republican governors, withdrew from most or all of the federal programs in June and July. This was done to encourage people to jump back into the labor market. And the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Labor Secretary Marty Walsh urged states with high unemployment rates to continue issuing aid to gig workers with long-term unemployed using federal funds allocated by the American Rescue Plan. Now it appears few, if any, do so everybody. The US Department of Treasury declined comment and the US Department of Labor is not tracking state decisions because it doesn't oversee use of these federal funds. Some economists are concerned that cutting off benefits too soon, while people are struggling to find jobs, could further slow the economic recovery. For example, unemployed workers were more likely to find jobs in states that ended federal benefits in June, relative to those that did not. And the forthcoming budget reconciliation bill has been described by members of both political parties and the news reports as a $3.5 trillion spending bill. House Democrats passed the $3.5 trillion budget resolution that the Senate counterparts approved early this month. The resolution is merely a framework though. Over the coming months, Lawmakers will write a legislative text of the spending bill, which could usher in the most radical changes to the healthcare system in America. Let's not forget this everybody. House Democrats passed the $3.5 trillion budget resolution that their Senate counterparts approved early this month. The resolution is merely a framework though, and it's hard enough to keep Medicare running in its present form. The federal insurance program for seniors and those on long-term disability already pays out more than a collection payroll taxes and beneficiary premiums. Yet by some progressives, Democrats believe that expanding Medicare to cover vision, dental and hearing benefits will work just fine. Those additions alone would cause approximately $358 billion over a decade. Moderate House Democrats drew a new set of lines in the sand Friday on a $3.5 trillion budget resolution bill. Budget bill that is the centerpiece of President Biden's economic agenda. Representative Stephanie Murphy wrote to Speaker Pelosi on behalf of a larger set of moderates. They stated the budget reconciliation bill must adhere to three overseeing, three overarching principles. The text of the bill would have to be worked out ahead of time between the two chambers in an informal process known as pre-conferencing so that Democrats do not have to vote on controversial provisions that would not make into law. Most of the bill's spending would have to be offset with an exception for climate change provisions. The exception should please the left everybody and it comes as the result of the, of the lawmakers determining the cause of action or inaction on climate change. Democrats want 72 hours to read the final legislation before they are asked to vote on it. The demands come in the midst of a battle between Schumer, between Democratic Joe Manchin and Congressional Progressives. 
So that's all the news in this video, folks. If you guys found this video in any way useful or helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and family. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Senator Bernie Sanders, a founding member of the Defending Social Security Caucus in the U.S. Senate. I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate Social Security Works for all of their efforts in making sure that we are not going to cut Social Security. We are getting ready now, of course, for the American Jobs Plan, and we had a plan that uh, clearly this country needs. You've heard me say again and again, when we talk about building the infrastructure and creating jobs in our country, we have to think big and transformatively, as Thomas Jefferson did with his first initiative in this regard, as Teddy Roosevelt did with the National Park Service that he created 100 years anniversary of what Thomas Jefferson did, what President Eisenhower did in the uh, interstate highway system that he established in the interest of our nation's security, and now what President Biden is presenting. All-American transformative thinking big, build back better. And as we say in the House, in every zip code in America, so that everyone has the full advantage of what the, the, the infrastructure does it creates jobs in the building. It creates commerce in the uh, moving of product to, from farm to uh, produce from farm to market or other products from production to the marketplace, of people to school and work and the rest, clean air for our children, clean water for them to drink, get the lead out uh, again, and again to talk about how we do this in a way that involves everyone in our country all across our country. We hope to do this in the most bipartisan way possible. Infrastructure has not been a partisan issue in the past. We hope that it would not be now. And so uh, again, uh, we, uh, we don't wanna do this in a way that is ancient. We wanted to do it as is the future. So many times you've heard people say, we wanna be on the right side of of history. No, we want to be on the right side of history, yeah, but we want to be on the right side of the future as well. So it, it's the building infrastructure is a safety measure as well, the safety of our bridges, our roads, the safety of the water our children drink, the list goes on. And then we, when we return, we have a, a, a legislative filled week before when we went broke for the uh, holy season, uh, we did have a time for committee work that has prepared us to bring legislation to the floor when we come back uh, in this next week. With that, I'd be 